Hi, I'm Tracy. Welcome to my channel. I have psycho clothes. I love to make fun edgy pieces out of thrifted finds and today we're working on this kimono. It just started out as a robe and I'm going to show you how I make it. You can call it a tutorial if you want, but um, it's more of a see how it's done because all the items are different. Your thrifted items are going to be different than mine, but I'll definitely do the best I can to give you a step-by-step -step on how I created this look. Now, this is dyed and it was all white. Everything was cotton and white, but you can do anything you want. You can have a floral robe and like the sleeves are made out of a dress. So you could do a floral dress in a different pattern or a check or animal print. You know, you can do anything you want. This just gives you the basic shape and fringes and details. So let's get started. Okay, so here's what we're starting with. This is just a plain white cotton row. Nothing special. So we're going to jazz it up. The first thing I'm going to do to the robe is cut the sleeves off. I want some nice big flared sleeves on this. So I will cut just outside the seam on the sleeve side. I'm going to stay right out here and I'll cut both sleeves off. Now what I'm going to do is make sleeves out of this thrifted white cotton dress that I have. First thing I did with the dress is I cut down one side seam just to open it up. What I'm doing now is I took the original sleeve that I cut off and I measured down the center. It's shorter over here and longer here so I just went down the center and did a measurement. And then I subtracted three and a half inches because I'm going to add fringe. And that will give me the length of the new sleeve that I am cutting out of the dress. And my new measurement is 17 and a quarter inches. Now what I will do is we're working with the bottom of the dress here. I'm going to take my yardstick or tape measure and measure up from the bottom 17 and a quarter inches. And I will do that all the way the whole length. I want the whole bottom of this dress. Now I have my marks, 17 and a quarter from the bottom all the way down. And I will just cut that off. Now, of course, I use black marker, so I'm going to have to stay a little bit below that black marker line. Now I want to cut this big long piece in half and if it doesn't have a seam you fold it over and that'll show you where half is. Luckily I have a seam right here that is exactly halfway and I'll just cut that. Okay so now I have my big long piece cut in half. Now I will have two sleeves but what I'll have to do is fold this over and sew it together on this side. Now I'll put wrong sides together because I like seeing seams on the outside. I think it just gives it another fun kind of messy detail. So when I sew it, I'll just use a fairly small stitch, a straight stitch, and I will use the color thread that I am going to dye the whole a kimono and I can't decide if I want denim blue or purple yet so whatever I decide I have to decide before I sew because that will be the color thread I use use the color thread that you will be dyeing it because a lot of times the thread won't dye along with the garments this is 60% cotton so I'm going to cross my fingers that it's enough cotton content that it will dye nicely so I won't pin this or anything. I'll just go up to my machine and stitch it. Now I want to add my sleeve to my robe. 
Sorry if there, you hear that humming. I think that's an air compressor or a lawnmower. My, my fiance has running outside the window there. Okay, so here is my cutoff sleeve. And here is the sleeve that I just sewn together. Now, I want to do this wrong sides together because again, I want to see the seam. So I'm going to turn this sleeve inside out. And I am going to take the bottom of the sleeve where the handle come through and I'm going to put it in this hole Believe me, this is the hardest part of the whole thing, and it's not even that hard, but if you get through this boring part, the rest is going to be a lot more fun. But these big sleeves make a big difference in the kimono. I think it makes it a lot more fun. Okay, so now I've got the sleeve inside the hole. Now I'm going to line up the end of the sleeve I just stuck inside there, and this sleeve of the rope and what I'll do is I'll just find the seams and I'll pin I'll pin on the outside I'll pin on the outside because that's how it'll go through my machine and then I will find the seams the top seam of the robe and what would be the seam on this one if I had it basically in half. Okay. So I have these two pinned. Now I'm just going to pin it all the way around. Now I lucked out that this really fit in there nicely. My plan was to um, have more pleating in this piece, but it doesn't matter to me. So then I would just kind of pin it and pinch pleat it along the way. But this one fit pretty good, so I'm just going to pin it straight. You know, real seamstresses are probably gasping right now that I'm doing things this way, but for me, this is more art. I have fun with it, and if it takes me two weeks to make something, I lose interest really fast. So I'm just going to pin that all the way around and then do the same on the opposite sleeve. I'm going to show you this real quick. See, my sleeve that I made is a little bit bigger, and so it won't line up perfectly, and that's perfectly okay. I'll just scrunch it up in there, and there will be little pleats when I sew it, just tiny ones, and that's okay. That'll be a cute look. Now I have both armholes pinned and I'll bring it to my machine and I'll remove this front plate and I will just stick this in there. And that's why I pinned on the outside so I can remove the pins as I go. And I'll do about a quarter inch seam allowance fairly small straight stitch. Okay, so now we have the sleeves. So cool. So now that I have the sleeves done, I'm going to cut a little off the bottom. This is very full length on me, and I'm going to add three and a half inches of fringe, and it'll be dragging the floor, and I don't want to be tripping on it, so I'm actually going to cut off five inches. I'll add three and a half of that back with um, fringe, but I don't want it tangled up in my feet. So I still want it full length, just not um, super, super long. So I'm just going to go around with my, can't find my ruler, so I'm gonna use my yardstick. And I'm going to mark five inches and I'm using a marker, so when I cut, of course, I'm going to have to cut above that black marker line. So I'll just go all the way down and mark and cut five inches off the bottom. Okay, so 
I'm down here at the bottom of my rope to kind of explain to you what I'm going to do next. Um, before I put fringe on it, I want to add some decoration, mainly on the back, but I will bring it up a little bit in the front here. Um, there will be fringe here, so I don't want to bring it too close to there because it'll be covered up with fringe. So I'm going to just start about right here on the robe and come around the back and sort of up the other side. And what I'll be doing is making sort of an abstract version of vines and flowers. They'll be messy. It'll just give you the impression that they're vines and flowers. They're not going to be perfect, but it'll just add a fun detail through here. And I'll show you how I do that. So I will come to my handy dandy bed sheet, which I use all the time on projects. I love it because they're 100% cotton most of the time. And if I'm dyeing something, they blend right in with whatever I'm making. It'll dye nicely with my rip dye. So I'm going to just make cut some strips for the vines. And they're going to be about, oh, maybe an inch and a half across. I'll make a few snips here. Maybe I'll start with five. One, two, three, four, five. And then I just rip where those strips are, where I notch those strips. And so I'll rip about five, and it may be too much, too little. You know, I can always go back and cut more. One thing about using bed sheets is you always have these little strings to pull off. And I always pull them off by wrapping them around my hand like this and they come off nice and easy. Okay, so now I'm going to cut some four inch strips and these will be for the flowers. And I'll probably cut about three of them to start with and see where that takes me. So what I'll do is I have my strips and I have my little chunky pieces that'll be the flowers and I'll just take these over to my machine. I won't pin anything onto my robe, but I'm going to explain to you right here, pretending this is the bottom of my robe, to explain to you how I did it. It's just sort of artsy and you do your own thing, but I'll try to explain the best I can how I do this. So. I start up in the, sort of the front of the row, like I was explaining, and then I'll come down. But up here, so I'll put this in my machine with my robe, and I'll, you know, do my back stitching. And then I'll just keep bringing this through my needle, and, you know, maybe I'll twist it a little bit, bring it down maybe back up, do a little twist. You know, I, there's no exact science to this. I just kind of want it to look viney, just kind of curvy and twisted. And as I'm going, every so often, I will put a flower. As I'm sewing this through my machine, I'll take one of these strips, fat strips that I cut, and I'll just twist it a little bit, wad it up, just kind of round in a circle. And it kind of looks like a rose, an abstract version. It's not perfect. And so as I'm twisting and going on my machine, I'll stick one of these roses and I'll just go right over it with my machine. And when you wash it and dry it, you know, it'll get all crumpled and weird looking, but it's abstract. It's not exact, but it'll give that look of a vine and flower on the back of your robe. And so I'll twist and, you know, go up and down and then take a, make another little flower. I just wrap it around a couple fingers here. And then maybe I'll put one here, 
you know, I just kind of feel it out as I go, as I'm sewing. So I will show you a little bit of that sewing at the machine. It's kind of hard to see what I'm doing on there, but then of course I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. And I'm just using a straight stitch and blue thread. I decided to go with a denim blue dye. So just adding my bed sheets and just kind of twist it. And I think the bulk of it, I'm going to have about probably nine, 10 inches up from the bottom. But it'll be all twisty and curvy. It won't be a straight nine inches across. Now, I think I'll come down a little bit, do a little twist. I think it's time for a flower. See, this is how far I've come so far. I think I'm going to go back when I'm done and add a flower right there. I kind of forgot, but this is a good spot for the second flower. So I'm just going to twist it up. Lift up, lift up my presser foot and that little tail I want to make sure gets caught in the needle there. And I'll just go pretty much straight across a little bit higher towards the top because I don't want it to flop over. And I'm using a denim needle. This is pretty thick to get through and a denim needle works a lot better than a regular needle. Okay, so I'll just keep continuing that all the way around the back and up a little bit on the other side. Okay, so now I have those all sewn on. This is the front right. I started about there, went around the back, I need to cut some threads and then all the way around to close to the front on the other side. Now the very first two flowers, I cut the big one in half. So I just did a little one on the front here and then on the opposite side. And I had way too many strips. I, did, I cut, I didn't need nearly as many as I cut, but I will use the more narrow ones here in a second and I'll show you. Okay, so now it's time to sew the fringe on. And I have fringe from a vintage chenille blanket. And what I love about this is it's cotton and it will dye along with the rest of the garment. So I'll do the front. I'm going to put fringe all around here, all around the bottom, and at the end of the sleeves. And I'll do the front a little differently than I do the sleeves in the bottom. I want, there's a pretty detail here, and I don't want to cover that up. This is stained and kind of dingy, big reason why I'm dyeing it. But I want to lay this alongside here with the fringe pointing out. And so I will just stitch that next to that pretty embellishment. And I may stitch it twice. I may go right along the edge here. And if it seems like it's flopping out too much, I may do another stitch about an inch in to secure it. So I'll do the front first. And I will start, since I'm going to have fringe at the very bottom and it'll you know, I'll start it right about here. So I will start this fringe for the front about half an inch from the bottom. And then I'll just sew it all the way around. Okay, so now I have that all sewn on. Started here, went up and around the neckline and came back down. Now I'm going to sew the bottom on. Okay, so here's the bottom again, and 
I am going to start my fringe about where this one left off. I'll have to go under that a little bit because I'm going to sew my fringe at the very edge. And so I will take this fringe, I'll start right here, and I will just sew around the edge all the way around. Okay, so here's what the bottom looks like. So now we have the front done, the bottom done, and now I just want to go around the sleeves. And I'll do the same as I did the bottom, just go around the very edge. And I'll start underneath because uh, there'll be a little gap in the fringe and underneath the seam on the bottom side of the sleeve. That'll be less noticeable, not that it's a big deal, but um, I'll go sew that on. Okay, now I have all the fringe sewn on. And now what I want to do, this will be the last step before I dye it. I want some more detail, of course, and I'm going to do make a really long fabric braid and I'll attach it up at the shoulders. So it'll come down and have some fringes and it will swoop down the back just a little bit. And um, then I'll do another little string that will swoop with it, which will just add some fun detail to the back and the front. So I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so I went back to my bed sheet and I ripped six one to one and a half inch strips. Now, why six? Because a braid only takes three, right? Well, mine weren't quite long enough. So I'm going to have to stitch two together to make one long side to make the three strands I need for the braid. Okay, so I have my three long strips and I want about a foot. I need to tie a knot in it to start the braid and I'm going to leave about a foot at the end here and just tie my knot. I'm clamping. I have this stand for my phone to do tutorials and it has a clamp on it. So I'm going to take advantage of that to hold the end of my braid here. Now I'm just braiding it and each time I do a turn on that. I have to make sure these long pieces are all straight, otherwise there'll be a big tangly mess at the end. So it's a little time consuming. Okay, so I have my braid complete. And what I want to do is I'm going to attach it at the shoulders. I want it pretty full length and even in the front and in the back I want it to just droop down a little bit so when I get it positioned the way I want it I'll pin it and I'll take it to my my machine and sew it okay I haven't sewn it yet I just want to give you kind of a better idea of what I'm doing I am only going to sew this at the top of the shoulders and so I'm just pinning it where I want to sew it. And this fringe piece is three and a half inches wide, but I'm the fringe itself is only about an inch and a half. I'm starting the stitching right about where that actual fringy part starts. And then I just have it droop down the back. Okay, here's my braid. And I don't need to go the whole width of the braid. I can just do a few little stitches back and forth in the center of that. Okay, so I've got the braid sewn on. But then what I did is I went back to my bed sheet and I stripped some thin pieces that, you know, half an inch to three quarters of an inch. I just like things really fringy and kind of wild looking. And so I pinned those on. I'm about to sew them. You know, they end in different lengths. They're just 
kind of wild. But then I drape them in the back. And now I'm going to, <clears throat> I have another even thinner one. I have two of these. And I am going to pin them on the arm, one on each side. And that will be a big, loose, giant bow. I'll just sew it in the middle here, and then I'll tie the bow when I'm finished. That'll just give us a fun, fringy, hippie kimono. Okay, so the sewing is all done, and it's time to dye it. <laughs> Not dye. Okay, so I'm using RIT dye, and this is for natural fabrics like cotton, linen, silk, things like that. There is a RIT dye for synthetic. I haven't tried it yet. I don't know if I have much faith in it or not. But so I'm using denim blue, and I have about half a bottle in here, which is fine because I want this to be kind of a light blue and not dark. I want it to kind of look like light colored jeans. We'll see if it turns out like that. So what I will do, and the, just, the directions are all on the back, I will pour it right into my washer. And how I do that is um, I'll take a cup of salt, put it in the washer, and then I'll pour what's left of this bottle in there. I'll start my washer on a normal cycle, but I'll let it fill up about five minutes before I add the duster. And then... Um, when it's done washing, I'll put it in the dryer. I feel like, you know, I could line dry it, but I feel like the dryer heat sets that dye a little bit extra, so I like putting it in the dryer. And um, it'll come out of the dryer a tangly mess because of all the strings and raw edges. Just take your time and kind of snip away at the strings and straighten it out. I actually like doing that. And, um, I'll come back and show you what it looks like again. Okay, I'm here in my laundry room about to get things started with the dyeing, the salt and the dye. But I want to answer a very commonly asked question that I get about dyeing in my wash machine. Um, will it ruin the next batch of clothes? I do an empty wash when I'm all done dyeing. I'll put laundry detergent in there and everything and just run it on hot. And that cleans it for me, and I've really never had an issue with um, it getting on another load of clothes. I probably wouldn't wash whites after dyeing something next. I'll do like a do the wa empty wash, and then my next load of clothes would probably be dark, so I probably wouldn't do white right away. But I've actually never had a problem. So, and as far as laundry something that has been dyed. I hear all kinds of things. You're supposed to be able to wash it, your garment, you know, on regular, like you do normal clothes. I have found once in a while, um, something will fade, the dye will kind of wash out, but I think that's because it wasn't heat set in the dryer. But um, I would definitely wash it alone in cold water and maybe on a delicate cycle after the initial dyeing. Here it is one more time. Wouldn't this be fun for festivals or for the beach? I love it. 